Great. Good morning, everyone. We've just started our live broadcast. I'll wait another minute or two so that everyone has a chance to log in before we get started. Stay tuned and we will begin shortly. All right, so I would like to welcome you all to today's live session for incoming research graduate students. This session is an opportunity for you to learn about communication, leadership and personal effectiveness, assess your own skills and career goals and start building an individual development plan. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. My name is Julia Goyle and I will be the moderator for today's live session. This particular session is one of several live sessions that we're hosting as part of Grad Ready. For those of you not familiar with the Waterloo Grad Ready program, this program has been designed as your orientation to graduate studies at the University of Waterloo to help you transition into this new role as a graduate student. The Grad Ready program helps you prepare for your first term as you begin your journey as a new graduate student at U Waterloo. Now, in addition to the live sessions this week, you also have access to the Grad Ready course on Learn, where you can find additional resources to support you. As already mentioned, today's live session is a chance for you to learn about professional skills foundations. Also, please note that we will upload this presentation to Learn, so if you need to review any of the material presented here, you can do that on your own time. The recordings can be found in the Grad Ready Learn website under the live sessions recording tab. Before we begin, I want to ensure everyone is aware of how to turn on live captions of this presentation. The instructions to do so are listed on this slide. You can turn on captions by clicking on the settings button on the, on the bottom right corner of your screen and then clicking the caption subtitles button and selecting English to turn on captions for the presentation. The attendees will also have the opportunity to ask questions during this session. You can ask questions by clicking on the chat bubble icon in the top right corner of your screen and typing the question in the live event Q&A Q chat window. If you would like to ask your questions anonymously, you can do so by checking the post as anonymous option. Your questions will then be sent to me and our event management team who will review and approve the question so it can be answered by the appropriate person. Once the question is posted in the live event Q&A chat window, we encourage you to go ahead and click the like button for questions that you are interested in so we can get them answered. If we are unable to answer any of your questions during the presentation, please don't be worried as we will address them on the discussion board in the Grad Ready course on Learn. And remember, the recordings from all the live sessions can be found in the Grad Ready Learn website under the live sessions recording tab. Please also note that inappropriate language and racist remarks will not be tolerated on any of the mediums used during the session, whether that is the live Q&A chat or other engagement platforms such as Mentimeter, and there will be consequences if such language is used. We want to create safe spaces for all participants where all students can feel a sense of community. Uh, Julia, sorry to interrupt, but you aren't actually sharing your slides. If you would like to, to share your slides, I think that'd be good. 
Sorry to interrupt. Thanks for telling me that. Give me one second, please. Can you see them now? Yep, all good. Perfect, sorry guys. I would also like to take some time to, to provide a territorial acknowledgement. Although many of us are working from home right now, much of the work at the University of Waterloo takes place on the traditional territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus in Waterloo is situated on the, on, on the Haldeman Tract, the land promised to the six nations that includes six miles on either side of the Grand River. If you'd like to learn more about our active work towards reconciliation, which takes place across our campus through research, learning, teaching, and community building, please note that all these efforts are centralized within the Indigenous Initiatives Office. You'll see a link in the chat if you'd like to learn more. In terms of the content for today's session, we will be starting things off by introducing our our presenters for today. As I mentioned, my name is Julia Goyle and I'm the moderator for today's session. I'm a PhD candidate in the School of Public Health Sciences and I'm also currently working as a discipline specialist with the Student Success Office. At today's session, we will hear from Kira Bushka from the Center for Career Action and Graham Norcote and Ileana Diaz, both from the Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs Office. At the end of each section, we will take up key questions so that these can be addressed to the entire audience. Once the formal presentations have concluded, we'll have lots of time for a live Q&A. I will now hand the floor over to Graham. Please take it away whenever you're ready. All right, thank you very much, Julia. So I am just going to, uh, if you could stop sharing your screen and I'll start sharing mine. Excellent, thank you. So, all right. So, thank you all for for joining us today. Um, so, uh, as Julia mentioned, this is the Professional Skills Foundation introductory workshop brought through, brought to you through uh, Grad Ready. Um, so, before we begin, just make sure that you can access the uh, shared OneDrive folder to follow along with the workshop materials. Um, if I could get Julia to, um, or another one of our moderators to. Uh, put the link to this in the chat. That'd be fantastic. But this is basically a OneDrive folder. You'll have access to it after the workshop as well with a series of different um, documents. You don't have to, to to access these during the workshop, but they can be useful to follow along uh, and also provides um, documents that you can use for the Professional Skills Foundation after the workshop. So yeah, if someone could put that in the chat, that'd be fantastic. Um, so as they mentioned, uh, my name is Graham Northcote, uh, pronouns are he, him, and I'm working with Ileana Diaz uh, at the Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs Office, as well as with uh, Kira and Phil uh, from the Center for Career Action. So as Julia mentioned, we want to keep this workshop a safe space, so discriminatory or offensive language or, or triggering language will not be tolerated. Uh, I won't reiterate the, um, the uh, land acknowledgement because Julia already did that, but I will reiterate that uh, if you are interested in learning more, you can educate yourself about the land on which we live, learn, and work uh, by starting here at the, the link in the description there, as well as the link that's going to be shared via the chat. Um, so just going to go over the learning out objectives and agenda for today's workshop. So by the end of this workshop, we're, we hope that you'll come away with an understanding of what the Professional Skills Foundation's program is and how you can get involved with it. We hope that you'll be able to recognize your current skills, uh, especially um, through the work that the Center for Career Action is going to be doing to help you do a bit of a skills assessment during today's workshop. And we hope that uh, during this workshop, you can begin formulating the beginnings of an individual development plan. And exactly what that is, we'll be going into later in this workshop. But that's sort of a core component of the Professional Skills Foundation program. Uh, the specific agenda for today's workshop, after we get through the introduction, uh, to professional development. Um, and that's just going to be me going over what the program is, again, how you can get involved. I'm going to be turning it over to Kira then with the CCA 
uh, who is going to be doing a skills assessment as well as going over some various aspects of, of professional development that are relevant to this program. Then I'm going to be taking back the reins to, to go over the program structure, actually walking you through step by step what is involved with this program, how do you go through it, how do you complete it. And then finally, we're going to be ending by looking at the kinds of activities you can put into your individual development plan, doing a bit of brainstorming through Mentimeter. Um, so I actually also asked the moderator to put the uh, Mentimeter access instructions in, into the chat as well. And we're just going to start off by doing that, um, just introducing yourselves um, through, through Mentimeter. Um, so if you could just uh, access the program, the information is on this slide here. Uh, I can just use my handy laser pointer. Um, so you can access it through doing, going to www.menti.com and using the code here, 809-1652. Uh, and you'll be able to go through the slides at your own pace. So whenever I mention going on to the next slide, simply go ahead and do so, swiping forward on your phone or computer, or whatever medium you'd like to use. And I'd just like you all to share your name, uh, if you're comfortable with it, your pronouns, as well as what program you're in. And then just a quick description of why you're interested in the Professional Skills Foundation program. All right, so why are you here today? What are you hoping to get out of it? Uh, so just get, get some idea of what everyone's coming to this workshop looking for. I think would be very handy uh, to get us off on the right foot here. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to our Mentimeter uh, slide here. And if you want to start uh, inputting your, uh, your, your responses, that would be fantastic. They'll come up on the screen here. So again, just uh, your name, your pronouns if you're comfortable doing it, um, your program and why you're interested in the program. Put it all in one answer um, and then just post it and it'll show up anonymously on the post here. And as Julia mentioned, uh, throughout this workshop, if you do have questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Our moderators will, um, will publish them accordingly or, or maybe even respond to them in the, in the chat uh, if there's something that can be responded to quickly and easily. Um, but if there's anything that comes up, um, during my presentation with, where someone feels like I should stop and explain something further, I'd ask Julia or the other moderators to just, you know, unmute, let me know that I could, I should really, really clarify something uh, before I'm moving on. Oh, excellent. We have the first introduction coming in here. Andrea, nice to meet you from the uh, Masters of Science. That's fantastic. Tran Lee, Maria, HD students. We got, uh, we've already got a bit of a mix of different program levels and disciplines, which is always great to see. Then I can access to develop professional skill set. Better presenter. Good. Yeah, so I, I like that there's, there's, we're already seeing a, a different sort of variety of different goals. And I think this is really important to think about because the Professional Skills Foundation, as you'll see, as I explain it more in just a minute, is very much self-driven, right? It's driven by what your goals are, right? So all of these goals that I'm seeing so far are definitely applicable in this respect. So when we talk about sort of developing, becoming a better presenter, for example, that can involve um, career preparation skills, can involve communication skills of various kinds, and what the Professional Skills Foundation can do is can help you find ways of developing a framework around that in order to develop those skills. The same with sort of professional skill sets or transferable skills or soft skills, as people are saying here. So those are all definitely great uh, goals to have going into this program. We can definitely help with that. I will ask, are there any questions that are coming up that I could answer while we wait for more people to introduce themselves here? It does not seem so. There aren't any other questions, Graham. Okay. Excellent. All right, yeah, so again, a, a, bit, a nice range of different program levels and program types here, which is always awesome. Okay, I'll give you another, I'll give you another, another minute or, or so to, to include a response if you want. So it's very helpful for us to see sort of what kinds of things people are looking for in this workshop. Um, 
you know, as, as, as a, sort of a, a balance here, um, thank you for introducing yourselves. I really, really appreciate that. Just as a quick introduction for myself, as, I, as Julie mentioned, my name is Graham Northcote. I'm a PhD, I'm actually a graduate student myself. I'm a PhD candidate here at the University of Waterloo in the Department of English Language and Literature. I'm doing my uh, thesis on um, the rhetoric of social justice movements. Uh, and, if, and if I could just ask uh, Kira to unmute and, and just introduce herself quickly, she'll she'll be taking over in a few slides. But just to introduce herself now, if she's comfortable doing that, would be fantastic. Hi, good morning. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. I am having some internet issues. Um, my name is Kira and my pronouns are she and her and I'm one of the graduate career advisors at the Center for Career Action. So it's nice to have you here this morning. Um, my role at the CCA is to support students in their career and employment goals and um, I work specifically with masters and PhD students and postdoctoral fellows. So good to have you all here this morning. Thank you very much Kira. So um, I'll, just to get right into it, um, what is the Professional Skills Foundation? That's what we're all here for today, right? So um, the Professional Skills Foundation, I'll be calling it PSF occasionally just for abbreviation uh, at some points during this presentation, but it's a program within Grad Venture, and Grad Venture itself is a central hub of resources for graduate students. Um, in the same way that Grad Ready is a system designed for incoming graduate students to help um, sort of acclimatize themselves to the University of Waterloo to see what resources are available to them and things like that. Grad Venture is basically a hub of, of workshops or programs that you can use to sort of help make get the most out of your graduate student experience. Uh, so it's kind of an umbrella term. Professional Skills Foundation is one of the programs that falls under it at the current time. And the PSF program itself is a professional skill credential. Um, it helps graduate students like yourselves create and complete an individual development plan. So as I mentioned, this IDP is a central component of the, the PSF uh, program. And what it is essentially is it's a self-directed program that provides a framework for developing your professional skills across four specific categories. And those are career preparation, communication, leadership, and personal effectiveness, right? So the main goal of the program is to help you figure out your own strategy and plan for developing skills in these four core categories to help with transferable skills people mentioned to help with you know, communication skills becoming a better presenter for example or to help with various other professional skills right and the, our goal is basically to work with you and provide a framework and structure for helping you do that work at the university so the, by the end of the program, the goals of the program are as follows. By the end of the program, you'll be able to identify and articulate your personal and professional skills, develop key skills in career preparation, communication, leadership, and personal effectiveness, assess your own skills and interests and values relative to your career goals, and, then, and increase your confidence and self-awareness as an advanced degree candidate exploring career options. So as I mentioned, um, this is a self-directed program. It's really uh, built around you being able to assess what your goals are professionally, what you want to get out of it, and us helping you achieve those goals in a structured way, right? And hopefully it's helping reframe your academic environment, your academic experience to acknowledge the fact that you are an, a professional essentially, or you are, you are an aspiring professional um, with an advanced degree, uh, in, a, in an advanced degree program and helping you sort of make the most out of that or get the most out of that experience. Okay. So I am going to turn it over now with that, with that brief, brief explanation. I'm going to turn it over to Kira, who will um, walk you through a few other elements from the, the Center for Career Action. So take it away, Kira. I will, I don't know if I can mute myself. Okay, great. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. As I mentioned, my name's Kira. I'm just going to introduce a little bit what the Center for Career Action does and how we can support you while you're a grad student. Um, so I work together with my colleague, Phil Miletic, um, to support all of the masters and PhD students and postdocs on our campus in a number of different career and employment things. So um, whether you're applying for a part-time job or a full-time job, or whether you're wondering what to do after you graduate and you're kind of career planning, um, we help people at all stages. Um, we also have staff that I haven't depicted on our, our slide here that will help you when you're when you're done your degree and when you've graduated, we have an alumni career 
advisor. So um, anything you can think of, resume cover letter, networking strategy, LinkedIn, um, job searching, career planning, we're here to support all of that through individual one-on-one -on -one appointments and um, also through um, workshops, asynchronous and live workshops. So that's what we do um, and that's why we collaborate with the GSPA on this um, program because you know so much about you as a grad student developing um, is often connected with career outcomes or, or building what I call your career identity. So Graham, if you wouldn't mind forwarding the slide, I'll, um, I'll go into the next piece here. Uh oh. Can everyone still hear me? Oh no, Graham has frozen. Oh. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm going to continue. Can someone maybe let me know in the chat if you can still hear me or if I've lost connection? Okay, someone's typing, so I think I'm all good. Fantastic. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the three main things that we see at the Center for Career Action when we meet graduate students and postdocs. Um, we, there are three areas I would say that we see real benefits when students are engaging in professional development and I'm going to talk about those three things. Um, you're already here so I'm guessing you already know why professional development matters or it matters to you in some way so I'm going to share what we see and what the literature says um, but professional development can help grad students in career planning and decision making that's the number one thing I'll address. It can help in terms of employability because it letters, your resumes, and your, your interviews in the future, and it's helping you expand your network. It's helping you get outside of your research lab. Um, so often grad students are sort of focused on their research and they're meeting the same students or, the, you know, their supervisor all the time. And so networking becomes and building community, a community of support becomes a, a big um, benefit of professional development as well. So I'll go into detail about these three things. And um, Graham, if you could forward to the next slide, that would be great. I think the Mentimeter is working. If you do want to do that again, I can go yes, back. Yes, I do. That'd slide. be great. Okay. Oh, is it the previous slide? Yeah, oh, it fantastic. Was the yeah, that'd slide, be yeah. great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I want to hear from you. Like, what have you heard? Um, why professional development matters? What do? You, what have you heard from other grad students? What What brought you here? Um, in terms of benefits of professional development, why does it matter to you? And I think we already heard like some of you want to gain certain specific skills. That's what we've definitely seen in the first intro slide where you introduced your pronouns, your names. Um, so maybe this might be a little bit repetitive, but if you want to think in a different context, um, yeah, why does it matter to you? What have you heard of the benefits of it? Um, why are you taking the time out of your grad studies to come to this and think about professional development along the side? So we'll see if um, any ideas come in. And I'm really sorry for my choppy internet. Of course, it's the worst uh, timing for that. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything on the slide there. Graham, are you seeing any responses? I'm also seeing my colleagues all frozen. So to me, it looks like I'm maybe disconnected. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not seeing any responses yet, but it should okay. be it should be working. Um, if if participants are having trouble, oh, there we go. I have some coming in right now. Can you see those, Kira? Yeah, I do. OK, so research methods. Um, so it matters to you because you're maybe expanding research methods or getting into new areas. One person saying competitive advantage in your career. OK, so being competitive, having an I guess an advantage there stands out to me. Well rounded skill set before starting my professional career. OK, so it's all about well roundedness, having an advantage, conducting yourself professionally in your field. Fantastic. That's helpful. Great. We usually have, you know, when we had this workshop in person, we would have a brainstorm at the beginning and ask people like, what what does it mean to you? Um, I see another response saying, um, I matter strongly because transferable skills need to be practiced constantly and may not be transparent in coursework. We all need this to get a foot in getting a job later. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people mentioning sort of career um, because it will help me make stronger connections and be prepared for real world challenges in my future career. OK, so I'm definitely seeing a lot of connection with goals for career. Um, and that's often what we hear when we kind of brainstorm together. What brings you here? Why does professional development matter? Um, absolutely. And I, I love this piece about this is a great reminder that skills need to be practiced, right? And and it's possible that as a grad student, you were practicing certain area of skills all the time time in your research and in your lab and then there might be some that you know you're not necessarily getting to focus on and so that's where professional development can come in. I see another response to pursue a career in academia creating strong relationships and networks is really important creating a strong CV and knowing where to look for jobs. OK, so already thinking forward building that CV looking for jobs building relationships. Great. Thank you everyone. That's fantastic. OK. Great, I think we can probably, um, I'll just wait another second to see if there are any other responses. Um, but I think a lot of you already touched on the things that I was going to touch on. Um, and I, as I said, those folks who usually come to this workshop, they already know why professional development matters. So we don't necessarily have to convince you of it. You're already here, you're already spending your time. There was something about this program that caught your attention because you realize it was important for personal reasons. And I see a lot of connections here to um, professionalism, building skills, practicing skills, uh, being prepared for the future. So. Graham, I think you can forward the slide, please, and we can go into um, the next piece. OK, so I already mentioned this is what I'll touch on, and I want to start with the career planning piece and how professional development can help you with career planning and decision making. Um, when I meet with students to help them figure out the what next career career plans there are usually a few factors that we look at and that we explore to help people understand what i call your career identity there are probably lots of career opportunities out there that would be a good match for you and usually when we're looking for the match i guess the fit we're, we're exploring what values do you have what matters to you what is meaningful to you what would give you work satisfaction that's sort of the values piece we look at the skills. What are you good at as a grad student? Not only what are you good at, but also of those skills that you have, which ones do you enjoy using on a regular basis and would you like to use in a future career? Uh, we look at interests. What sparks your interest? What do you enjoy? You know, what, what catches your attention? Um, we also usually look at personality factors because that can impact what kind of work environment would be suitable and enjoyable to you. And then, of course, we also have to look at external factors like what's happening in the labor market or what city do you want to live in and what sort of companies and organizations or uh, opportunities exist in that place and so on. So there might be external factors. And the reality is um, the more you engage in professional development, the more you ga may gain self-awareness in some of these areas. So if Graham, if you could just forward the slide to the next piece, what we see in students who focus in professional development, students who engage in things other than their coursework and their research, which is already a lot to engage in, but students who do a little, uh, who go beyond that, generally start to explore either new skills. So like someone said in the previous slide on Mentimeter, you know, practicing skills, developing skills, getting better at certain skills. Um, and then the more you do that, also you start to realize which of those skills do you enjoy the most? Which ones do you enjoy, maybe don't enjoy using and don't want to use in a future career? Um, the professional development also allows you to explore other interests grad program doesn't allow you to zero in on all the interests because it's very focused maybe right so it allows you to explore and expand self-awareness of other possible interests or how does your research and your grad studies connect to other areas and then the values piece as well the more you try out the more you know what matters what doesn't um so we we definitely can see evidence that of students who engage in, in professional development usually gain sort of leads to better decision making on what careers, what career paths, what what possibilities might suit you best. So that is definitely one factor we're seeing with professional development when and students engage in that. Um, I'm going to ask Graham to forward to the next slide. Um, professional development. Graham, if you could forward this slide. Thank you. Forward it again. Oh. Sorry. Here. Yes. Uh, I, I did me? forward it. I did forward it. Can you see the, the gray table I, up there? 
I kind of okay. There's something funny happening with my teams. I see two slides superimposed now. That's okay. Oh. As long as everyone else sees slides, okay. That's wonderful. I'll go into the next piece, which this is the skills. So I want to talk a little bit about this this great chart and just the keywords on it. I won't go into major detail. Also, because I can't see it too well. Um, one of the things I just wanted to share about skills um, and how professional development can help with the skills awareness. And oh, now I see it beautifully, wonderful. And and it also can help just in general with what someone was saying on Mentimeter that development of skills that maybe your research area isn't allowing you to develop or um, the skills you need to do your research well, that's also a big piece of it, right? Either what you need for your research or what you need for future career goals and plans. Um, and I just wanted to share this chart because it's something that the um, our unit, Center for Career Action, belongs to a larger unit on our campus, Cooperative and Experiential Education. And that unit's been doing a lot of research on um, what are the skills that people need to be ready for the future of work? We know that the workplace is changing quickly. There are jobs that exist now that didn't exist 10 years ago, um, and that's going to continue changing because of rapid changes in technology, um, but also we're in an unpredictable world. I mean, we've just seen how much of a, a pandemic has disrupted our work, the way we do work. I mean, most people have been working remotely in, in this times, and so many things have changed. This is one example. Um, there are so many other impacts that are predicted that that will, will change the, the way we work in the future. So um, the research kind of identified the areas where people will need to build skills to be ready for all these changes in the future of work. And um, they're in four different categories, expanding and transferring expertise, developing of self, building relationships, designing and delivering solutions. So some of the key areas is, is learning how to apply your context specific skills to different areas, um, learning how to manage information and, and data, learning how to adapt quickly to different technology changes. Um, the self piece, the developing self is about self-managing, managing yourself and, and adapting to different situations, assessing and understanding yourself really clearly, and then being able to adapt that to lifelong learning and, and career development. The building relationships piece is all about being able to communicate clearly and collaborate with others, um, also in a, in a diverse workplace, so having intercultural effectiveness. And then designing delivering solutions is all about using innovation, critical thinking and implementing. So these are some of the areas that have been identified as preparing people for the future. And again, your research and your coursework might prepare you really well for building skills and preparing for some of these things. And some you might feel like you need a little more boost through professional development, right? So that's a, that's a little note as well about preparing for the future with skills, preparing for your career, but also preparing for the world of work that is constantly changing um, and opportunities that will come up uh, in the future. Okay, I'm gonna jump to the next slide if that's possible. We'll see how it looks on my end here. As long as everyone else is seeing it, that's always great. <laughs> Um, perfect. So as you go along in your in your grad career, um, one thing we encourage students to do is start keeping track of things. I saw someone did say on Mentimeter that they're working now on building their CV and the CV is fantastic to work on building. Um, if you have another thing to keep track of all the skills and all the things you're doing, that would be great, like a notebook or an Excel sheet. I call it a bit of an inventory of skills. So keeping track of what you're involved in, whether it's um, something you do on a you know student association or something you a project you work on or anything you get involved in as a teaching assistant or research assistant um, start paying attention to what you did and then the skills and attributes that this experience demonstrates about you so for example um, here's a story of a grad student who ran a successful 200 person fundraising event for engineers without borders that's something they did on the side as a grad student and if they start to analyze, well, what does that mean about them? What skills were they developing? There was organizing, planning, they had to communicate the event to people and persuade people to attend and then persuade people to, to, to donate money for the event um, and for the, the cause and then managing the volunteers and adapting to changing situations. So the story, this is the story, this is what they did as a grad student, but we want to start brainstorming on how do these stories, the things that you're doing as a grad student, what do they mean about you in terms of your skills? Uh, and this helps you build your portfolio, your CV, prepares you for applying to future jobs. Um, very often when you're applying for work, the employer is looking for transferable skills. They're looking for a list of, in the job posting of you know someone who can do this, 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 and this. And so what you want to do as a candidate is start thinking of what are all my examples or what is my evidence that I have the skills to do this job? And sometimes that evidence comes 
comes from your coursework and your research. Sometimes it comes from those extra curriculars and the, the professional development that you're going to be engaged in. All right, so the more you get involved in, the more you try things out, the more stories you have or the more evidence you have that you have a certain skill set needed for the things you're applying to in the future. All right, and I think I'll move on to the next slide, which is sort of the, the final little thought about why professional development can be helpful. And that is about networking. I don't see the slide, but just, oh, there it is. Okay, connecting with others and growing your network. So another thing that I see a lot when I meet with grad students is that sometimes their research can be very solitary. They might meet with their lab mates if they're in a research lab, some research that's it's very independent and just you meeting with your supervisor once in a while, right? So sometimes uh, it's you're focusing on, you're seeing the same people again and again, the people in your program and the people in your lab and your research group. Um, so doing professional development and getting involved in other grad student things on campus can really help expand connections. And why is that helpful? It, it can help with so many things because the more people you meet, you might you might get ideas for collaborations for your research. You might get ideas about resources and support on campus that you otherwise wouldn't have heard about or events. Um, you, you know, again, you might get ideas for future employment um, possibilities that that could really be helpful. So as you join different possibilities, different professional development with other grad students on campus, um, you have an opportunity to meet new people. And, and that is a way of introducing yourself and practicing that introduction can be really helpful because you'll be doing it at conferences as a researcher, you'll be doing it um, you know, as you network and look for work in the future. Um, I know someone did say on Mentimeter that networking is going to be very important because they know that the career area they're going into is quite competitive and academic career market. So um, it's it's all like the more you engage in professional development, the more you practice doing this introduction. So if you're meeting new people, you get to practice telling them about who you are, what program you're in, what you're what you're researching, what you're working on, and key things about your experience. And the more you practice introducing yourself to others, the easier that gets. And again, the people you meet, you never know who they know or what what information they have that can be helpful for you in your professional development, in your development as a grad student, or in, in reaching your future career goals. Um, if you are meeting folks um, as well through some professional development that you think have really interesting careers and you want to learn more about how to get into that field, we always encourage you to, to consider asking for an informational interview, asking for someone for 15 to 30 minutes of their time. Um, if you're connecting with them on LinkedIn or email after you've met them at an event and, and just maybe asking, could I chat with you about future career possibilities or could I learn more about your area of work? So lots of benefits for getting involved in things that are a little bit outside of your, your everyday um, research and coursework. And I think many of you already knew those benefits and that's probably why you're here. So I'm, I'm going to pass it off now to to Graham. Um, thanks for forwarding my slides. Um, were you not wanting to walk them through the? No, yeah, I will do that. Sorry, I was. You know what? I know we were going to do a five minute break, and I, maybe I'm ready for break. Sorry, my internet is so laggy that I'm like, I'm done with the internet here. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Graham. Um, this is your chance to sort of reflect uh, on you and where you're at as a grad student. I imagine you know this is like. We're into mid-October now. Um, you've maybe had a chance to get a sense of where you're at. Someone mentioned they want to build research method skills, so you're probably already seeing some pieces of where you might feel you want to develop skills further. Um, we have a little assessment here for you to do, and I'm wondering um, if I think I have, I can pop it into the Q&A so everyone has this link here, this bit.ly link. We'll will lead you to a self-assessment to look at four different areas. The Professional Skills Foundation allows you to build skills or has categorized skills in, in four different areas, and that is career preparation, communication, it's really meant to give you a sense of where you at in certain areas um, of those four pillars right now. Um, a couple of things I just want to say about the questionnaire. Um, Obviously, it's not capturing every single skill in the world. There are things there that maybe aren't captured. It's, it's, a, it's just a questionnaire as a starting point um, in case you haven't done a lot of assessing yet of yourself. I'm, I'm going to, while I'm speaking, I'm going to kind of pop it in the chat. Another thing I just want to say is you might see some words or some skills there that really don't resonate with you. You might think that is not a skill I need to even think about or work on or that doesn't, I don't like that word. That's not something in my field that is needed. 
And if that's the case, that's also totally okay. Um, don't worry so much about that one. So uh, Ileana has just posted the link for that assessment. It should take you a few minutes to do um, somewhere between five to eight minutes. So I'll give you a moment right now to do that. And if there are any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Your questions, um, if they're private, we will not publish them to everyone. Um, so feel free to ask questions about that. We'll give you a moment right now to reflect and this might help you as we build towards your individual development plan so that you get a sense of the, the areas that are going to be important for you to develop or the, the things that might matter to you there. Um, I also will say when we used to do this in the paper version, um, I would always encourage people to add their own words to each category. Are there things that you want to develop that are not listed in this questionnaire? So pay attention to that as well. OK. I'll, uh, I'll pay attention to the time and start timing about five minutes now.
OK, it is a little bit difficult for me to tell how far you are in your self assessment. So if you're still working on it, sorry to interrupt. If you've finished, um, feel free to go to the next Mentimeter question if you want to share. So if you'd like to share what you've identified as the professional skills you'd like to work on. Oh, fantastic. Several people already have, so that signals to me that some people are done. OK, and I've got rapid info search, presentation skills, balancing priorities writing papers, preparing teaching dossiers, conference presentations, self-marketing and science communication. Fantastic. I'm I'm going to wait another couple of minutes um, in case other people want to share some of the results from their self-assessment. And I also uh, I know we have a quick break scheduled right after the self-assessment. So if you are done, um, let me just double check the time. OK, let's let's break until 1025. Those of you who are still working on the self-assessment, you can please finish it and feel free to share in the Mentimeter um, any responses that you have that um, you'd, you'd like to share. Um, it's kind of neat to see what everyone wants to work on, and I don't see any overlap here, which is neat too. All of you are unique individuals with unique needs, so it's, it's neat to see all the diverse skills you want to work on. Um, so feel free to finish that self-assessment. Um, share some things on Mentimeter, and if you just need to grab a um, glass of water, take a little stretch, go ahead and do that. I see something else has just come in. Conference presentations, presentation skills. There's that one seems to be a big one. The presentations. Thanks for sharing. And I'll just I'll just briefly respond. Uh, I see one thing in there as well that preparing a teaching dossier, and I mm -hmm. think that's a really valuable valuable skill to approach and the CTE, the Center for Teaching Excellence, um, has an uh, entire program sort of built around sort of teaching dossiers as well as other teaching skills and things like things like that. So I definitely encourage people to check them, check them out, check out the CTE if you're interested in that kind of thing. Yeah, fantastic. Um, actually in the writing and presentation skills and science communication, I know that the center, the writing and Reading Communication Center has a lot of workshops on presentations and communication and writing papers. So there's a lot of that great stuff happening at the Reading Communication Center, also specifically geared towards grad students in many cases. Fantastic. Yes, yes. in fact, they, their, their program called Speak Like a Scholar, which specifically, um, which is entire, a week, basically a week long program dedicated to developing your communication skills that actually started just today. Um, so that, that's that's the one for this term, but definitely keep an eye out for that um, going forward if you're interested in that kind of thing as well. Great. Okay. So I, I'll um, I'll just turn off my microphone and I'll let everyone have a stretch break for four minutes. If you do happen to still finish up the self-assessment and want to share anything on Mentimeter, we'll leave the slide up and your your information, your your thoughts and ideas that you want to skills that you want to work on will pop up here. See you at 1025 again.
Okay, so it's thank you so much for that, Kira. It's 10:25, so I think we'll move on now to the next stage of the presentation, where I will start going over the actual program details and structure of the Professional Skills Foundation. Um, so I'm going to oh, slides are here. We go. All right, here we go. So. Um, the Professional Skills Foundations, um, so thank, So as Kira has sort of laid out here, um, the Professional Skills Foundation is really about working towards the professional goals and skills that you've designated for yourself. So in the previous sort of slide in the Mentimeter, we identified what kind of skills we're interested in developing here, and then presumably these are based on specific professional goals that we have. So for example, um, those that are looking to create a teaching dossier, right, or build up those skills might be interested in a career in teaching, for example. So whatever your specific career goals are, the Professional Skills Foundation is designed to provide you with a framework for building up the skills relevant to that particular professional goal. And to that end, there are three primary steps to the program. The first step, and that's the step that you're in right now, actually, <laughs> doing the introductory workshop, so step one is basically getting started with the program, and that involves doing the introductory workshop, which you are um, sitting in on right now, creating an individual development plan, and then reviewing that plan with the GSBA staff. So this would be myself or more likely my colleague, Ileana. So what the individual development plan is, is it is essentially a, a contract with yourself. You are developing a plan for the kind of professional goals that you have and the types of skills that you are looking to develop, right? So it comes out of the self-assessment that you just did and the skills that you identified as things that you want to be pursuing. And a plan, your individual development plan is basically you coming up with an approach or a strategy for developing those skills that you've identified. So how do you actually want to achieve your professional goals? How do you want to develop these skills, right? And in the, uh, in the OneDrive folder that was shared with you that should still be in the chat, um, you'll be able to find uh, a, a uh, fillable PDF document for an individual development plan that you can use. Now, you don't have to follow along during the workshop, but you can also look at it afterwards if you want. And once you've completed your individual development plan after this workshop at any given time, you basically work with Ileana or myself to review that plan and have it approved before you move on to step two. Now, step two, is where the, the majority of the work in the Professional Skills Foundation takes place. And that is breaking down your identified skills and goals into these four categories, right? The career preparation, communication, leadership, and personal effectiveness. And for each of these categories, you're gonna complete one workshop and one activity. And for each workshop and activity, you're also going to reflect on that workshop or activity on how, on what the main takeaways were for in the case of the workshop, or re in the case of activities, reflecting on how this has developed your skills going forward, or how you're planning to use the what you've learned to pursue your professional goals. So the idea behind this structure is that you have multiple opportunities to, to find activities or workshops that are progressing or developing your skills in different ways. And then you're also having an opportunity to reflect on your progress and what needs to happen next, right? So it's kind of an iterative process where you do a particular task or a workshop, then you reflect on what you learned from there, how that has sort of helped you develop your skills, and there, where do you go from here, right? So how what's next in working towards your professional goal? So once you have completed, so this basically this amounts to eight different items, right? Four workshops, four activities across these four different categories, right? Once you've completed those eight things, uh, you move on to step three. Now, step three is the mock interview and takeaways, and this is actually facilitated by the CCA, the Center for Career Action, and I'll get into a bit more detail about what that involves later on, but essentially it is a capstone project where you sort of basically put all the different skills that you've developed through the previous workshops and activities into practice in a mock professional context, right? So it's about how you actually apply these different skills and how you actually communicate these skills in a professional context to show an, a potential employer, for example, that you've developed these different, these different abilities. 
So if you have questions about this structure, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, if Ileana can answer them, she, she will in the chat. Otherwise, uh, any of my colleagues can feel free to stop me and ask me to clarify things before I move on. All right. So as I mentioned before, the step two, the, the main body of the Professional Skills Foundation's program involves workshops and activities. For the workshops, you're going to be selecting a particular workshop that is associated with that core category. So communication, leadership, career preparation, or personal effectiveness. Now, these don't have to be University of Waterloo workshops to count. You can be looking elsewhere and finding workshops just that are, you know, being offered online or in person or wherever you're finding them. As long as they're approved um, by GSPA staff with, when they review your independent development plan, that's fine. Um, when it comes to requirements for workshops, they need to be one, minimum one hour long. There's no maximum. And when I say there's no maximum, it means that um, whether it's a one or a two or a five or all day workshop, it still counts as one workshop for the purposes of this program. When you complete a, a workshop, whether it's through the University of Waterloo or through an external uh, source, we need you to provide proof that you have attended the entire workshop. So this can be a, a confirmation certificate or an email or a screenshot, whatever works. So you send that to us and then we note your progress in our tracking, in our master tracking list. So we can sort of mark that down as completed. Um, and for each workshop, you're also asked to provide four to five key takeaways to submit electronically, either scanned or, or typed in a document to send us. And what these takeaways do is, is essentially a form of, of self-reflection and note-taking, right? It's sort of, you've completed this workshop and you want to identify what are the main things I learned from this? How is this gonna be useful for me, right? What am I gonna be using here? So depending on the kind of workshop, that could be, all right, so this workshop taught me this really important skill that I wasn't familiar with before, or this workshop introduced me to these really useful productivity tools or these really useful networking tools that I hadn't heard of before that I'm going to be using going forward. Or perhaps this workshop gave you the opportunity to network with, with your peers. It gave you a chance to hear their perspectives on, on a particular issue relevant to your professional goals. So the takeaways just get, give you a chance to reflect on how am I going to be using this workshop material going forward? How does this fit in with my goals, right? And that sort of self-reflective consciousness um, in relation to workshops that we do helps make them a bit more useful for us going forward because it helps us identify what the, the key points, the key takeaways that we want to remember from these workshops are going to be. And it also helps that we can use these takeaways as kind of action items, right? Like maybe, as I mentioned, if the workshop introduces you to new tools or new um, new research uh, materials or things like that, you could have these takeaways as sort of action items saying, like, after this workshop, I want to look more into these tools or look more into this research field, that kind of thing. So that's the requirements for completing a workshop with the Professional Skills Foundation program. The other main type of, of item is the activities. So activities are a bit more nebulous. Workshops are pretty easy because they're clearly defined. You find them, you register for them, you attend them, done. Activities can be pretty much anything. Um, an activity is a self-directed project or exercise focused on developing professional skills within one of those four core categories, right? And this really highlights how the Professional Skills Foundation is a very self-directed program. We're trying to provide you with a framework for developing your skills, but it is really up to you to push forward through this and decide how you're gonna make the most out of it. Well, in terms of requirements for activities, we require that they be a minimum of one to two hours of time commitment, and they must be clearly related to the core category that, that you've assigned it to. So during that IDP approval meeting at the very beginning of the process, you're gonna lay out all the different activities you're proposing you do. And the GSBA staff that's working with you um, will determine whether they think that those sort of are meeting those core categories or not, or help you sort of revise them as necessary or give you some more ideas. And so they're really there to help you work through what kind of activities are gonna be most relevant and most useful for you to work towards your professional goals. So that's really what the purpose of those meetings are at the beginning, um, is to sort of make sure you're on the right track of, of choosing activities and workshops that are gonna to contribute to the goals that you've laid out for yourself for this program. 
Um, and finally, um, similarly to the workshop, there's a sort of a, a, a post-activity component here. And that's a reflection, a 500-word reflection typed and submitted electronically. And similar to the takeaways, this reflection asks you to think about um, what, you're, what you learned from, your, from this activity, how you're going to implement what you've learned going forward, right? So, for example, if the activity that you're doing is, let's say, doing a conference presentation, right? Maybe that's, maybe that's the goal that you've set for yourself. Um, your reflection could involve just a brief look at what are some things that you're very pleased about the conference and how it went. Like, what do you think you did really well? And you want to sort of keep doing that in future scenarios going forward. And then what are some things that you think you could improve on, right? So my first conference presentation, for example, um, I went over time. And so when I reflected on it afterwards, I said, okay, so in terms of things that I want to work on next time, I want to work on time management. I want to practice this ahead of time and make sure that um, I'm staying within the time. Things that I was really pleased with was the uh, engagement. Um, I did a good job of engaging my audience afterwards and had a really lively question and answer period uh, following my initial presentation of the, of the conference paper. So I was really pleased with that and that's something that I determined that I was saying about, I was determined to continue doing that going forward. So I identified sort of what did I do here that made this so engaging for my audience and how can I replicate that in future instances. So the reflection process helps you get the most out of those, these activities that you're doing, right? It helps you identify what are the strengths and weaknesses of your approach, what can you use and learn to help achieve your professional goals. Okay. Um, so when you're trying to choose an activity, which is a bit more difficult than a workshop, as I mentioned, because it's, it's sort of more open-ended, there's three main questions that you can ask yourself. First of all, does this activity fit with your goals, right? So it's, it's pretty easy to sort of select, you know, random activities that you could be doing. But remember that IDP um, is about a very specific set of professional goals that you're trying to work towards. So you want to ask yourself, how does this activity help me get to this goal that I'm trying to reach, right? The other question to ask is, do at least some of your activities help you expand your professional or personal network? So as people have already mentioned in the Mentimeter earlier in this workshop, Networking is a very crucial um, part of the professional job hunt, um, especially in academia as well. And so we encourage you to have a mixture of individual activities as well as sort of not necessarily group activities, but outward facing activities that involve you coordinating or communicating with other people, right? So for example, one activity could be an informational interview, reaching out to a potential employer, asking for an inter informational interview. And that's something that's expanding your professional network um, as part of the activities that you're doing for the Professional Skills Foundation. And finally, the question we want to ask, want you to ask is, is, that, is this activity out of your comfort zone or something you do regularly? So we don't want you to be using um, activities that you've already done or that um, you're already pretty familiar with or comfortable with. We want you to be doing activities that are outside of your comfort zone, right? So for example, I mentioned conference presentation. If you've done a dozen conference presentations already, maybe choose something different for your activity because the whole point of the Professional Skills Foundation is to push you forward, right? It's to, to, it's to figure out how you can work on developing your skills to move yourself forward to, to establish growth, right? So it's really about growth and we really want to emphasize that. So you want to choose activities that are sort of new to you um, or that maybe are not something you're all that familiar with or skills that you, you want to improve or skills that you want to sort of learn more about uh, through practice. So those are the questions you can ask yourself when you're sort of figuring out what kinds of activities you're trying to develop. So I'm going to go through now uh, the four categories uh, so we can understand a bit about the, just the, the basic definitions of those four skill categories and then what, how different activities or workshops could fit into those. So the first of these was career preparation. And career preparation is the process of learning about and improving your skills to be successful in your employment, whether it's current employment or future employment. Um, and the process can include discovering career motivators, exploring a range of career paths, creating and maintaining a professional network, and effectively translating skills within application documents and interviews. So example workshops surrounding this are 
uh, any number of workshops that are offered by the Center for Career Action that are directly relevant to a variety of different um, a variety of different career preparation skills. So, for example, the CCA often offers workshops on resume building or um, networking. For example, I believe actually there is one coming up in November on networking. I could be wrong about that, though. So please correct me if I'm wrong there, Kira. Um, and uh, activities that could be involved could be, as I mentioned, the informational interview, right? Reaching out to a potential employer um, as a way of preparing for your career, or simply doing something like uh, creating a new uh, resume or CV specifically tailored to the kind of job that you're interested in, right? So that could be something that you maybe, maybe you haven't done before. Maybe your previous resumes and CVs have been more general. And for your activity in this program, you want to take a stab at um, developing a resume that is specifically targeted and focused towards this type of job that is part of your professional goals, right? So those are some examples of things that you can do for career preparation. So second category is communication. And communication is the process of sharing information in written, spoken, or visual forms. This can include skills of effective communication, adapting to a variety of audiences, using a wide range of tools, uh, or multiple formats. Right. So doing a conference presentation, that could definitely be an activity that you use for the communication, um, the communication uh, requirement. You could also um, use something like the three-minute thesis competition, which is asking you to present your thesis in a three-minute slideshow or video um, that is probably something where most of us are not very familiar with. We don't tend to communicate our research in short um, three-minute presentations, right? So it's a, it's a way of expanding your communication skills by getting you to work with different tools and different formats. Uh, and that's sort of really emphasizing that sort of flexibility of, of professional skills in that regard. In terms of workshops, as we mentioned before the break, uh, the Writing Communication Center has a ton of great workshops, both synchronous and asynchronous, um, on communication skills tailored specifically to graduate students. Um, a lot of them tailored specifically to research students as well. Um, so that's something, definitely something to check out there if you're looking for different workshops that you could use. Uh, third is leadership. So leadership is the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common vision. It includes successfully managing people and constrained resources, setting goals, establishing a plan, and achieving obje objectives while exercising empathy, creativity, and thoroughness. So when it comes to activities that could be involved with the leadership category, that could include something like perhaps uh, as a research student, you want to set up a study group with your peers, right, as a way of making sure that your um, accomplishing sort of your milestones and your research progress uh, and things of that nature. So you, that's one example of an activity you could use that fits in with the leadership category is setting up a group of your peers uh, to work on a particular task or goal or maybe even a project that you establish among your peers as well. And finally, uh, personal effectiveness. So personal effectiveness is the ability to use one's resources, talents, strengths, skills, energy, and time to improve oneself and achieve life goals. It could include developing time management skills, intercultural understanding, personal balance, and mental or physical wellness. So for these things, um, these are more general skills that are going to make you sort of a well-rounded individual when it comes to the professional skills and your, your approach to professional contexts and situations. Um, some definite, some great examples of workshops are through the Human Rights and Equity Office um, in terms of intercultural understanding and things of that nature. Uh, Campus Wellness also has useful workshops on things like managing stress and things like that, which are important aspects of improving our professional effectiveness, right? Um, when we think about wellness, wellness is really a matter of making sure that we're capable of doing the work and, the, and having the lifestyle that we want to have, whether it's physical or mental wellness. So doing workshops that help us manage stress or anxiety or things of that nature can really improve our overall productivity. I myself deal with a number of sort of anxiety issues and part of my professional development has been learning how to manage those effectively. So for example, I have um, a, a pretty severe anxiety disorder, especially around public speaking. So I've had to develop a lot of personal tools to help me do workshops like this without sort of panicking and things like that. So things like that are very much interconnected with your professional development. I definitely encourage you to check out you know, Human Rights and Equity Office, Campus Wellness, and other places for workshops of that nature. 
Okay. So here, just, these are just some examples of different activities or workshops. All these workshops here are, are workshops that are actually coming up um, this term that you can attend. And just to sort of take a second here to sort of guess what, um, which of the core categories you think these different workshops or activities sort of belong to um, as we go through them. So first of all, networking in academia. That is um, pretty self-explanatory as a career preparation uh, workshop. It could also arguably be a communication workshop, depending on how you frame it. And it's important to understand that some of these activities and workshops can belong to more than one core category, right? It's, it is possible that a workshop could fit into either leadership or personal effectiveness or career preparation or communication. And that's something you would work out when you're developing your independent, independent development plan your individual development plan. You would work that out with GSBA staff to decide which of the four categories you want that workshop to count for. It can only ever count for one of the categories, so right? So even if it could count for either one, you still have to choose which one you're gonna count it for. Um, the, one of the activities is here is initiate and lead a collaborative project with peers. So as I mentioned, this is an example of leadership. There's effective question strategies, this is a workshop run by the CTE which could be a communication um, workshop because it's helping you figure out how to communicate effectively with your students as an instructor. Uh, participating in GradFlix is another communication one. So GradFlix is actually a, a competition similar to Three Minute Thesis that actually just launched uh, last week. Uh, it's run by, the, by GSPA and it's, a, it's for research graduate students specifically. And it basically involves creating a one-minute video that explains your research as a, as a research student. Um, and you share this as part of a larger competition. There's there's cash prizes to be won. Um, you can sh your, your work can get showcased on a live virtual event in January. I definitely urge you to check it out. You can find it out on the on GSPA website. Uh, look for Gradflix. So that's definitely an example of a communication activity that you could take on as part of this program. And finally, uh, a CCA workshop skill development plan for graduate students. So figuring out specific types of skills and how you're going to develop them can be an element of personal effectiveness or arguably a, a workshop related to career preparation, right? So again, it could probably count towards either one. You would work that out as part of your IDP. If you're looking for a comprehensive list of university workshops, you can find it here on the Grad Venture event, event listings. There's also a, a URL for that in the OneDrive folder that, that you were shared. Uh, but if one of our moderators could maybe put the, uh, the bit.ly um, link in the chat as well, that'd be fantastic. Um, and that just has a comprehensive list of, of workshops that are coming up you know, by month. So September, October, November, December for the fall term uh, and, lists, and also lists which of the different categories that they could fall into. So it's very useful if you're interested in doing the Professional Skills Foundation. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of water because my voice is dying. All right. So I'm going to introduce us to another mentee activity in a second here. So with that explanation of, of activities that we talked about and different options for what activities could be, I'd like to individually brainstorm us some ideas for activities that you could use for the, for the Professional Skills Foundation program. So when you can sing an idea, make sure, as we mentioned, that it's at least one to two hours of time commitment, that it's something new, right? So we want something that's pushing you forward, something you haven't necessarily done before, or is a bit outside your comfort zone, and that it clearly develops a specific core skill, okay? So you can go to the next Mentimeter slide um, on your own if you'd like, and share one or more of your ideas through the Mentimeter, uh, and include which core skill this activity would help you develop. And this has two purposes. One, it helps you brainstorm right now, but the second is um, later on after this workshop, we'll make available the uh, the slides and, and things like that in addition to the recording, and we'll also make available the Mentimeter uh, results. So you can actually have this little database from other participants of this workshop of different activity ideas that you might want to, to try out or modify for yourself as well. So you can start doing that now. So what is an activity that you could include in your individual development plan. So I already see we have one response here of a paper. So I'm assuming this means like a conference paper or an academic paper of some kind. That's definitely something you could include for sure. But just remember to keep it keep in mind that these are meant to be very goal oriented and goal specific. 
So if you're developing a paper, what specific skills are you trying to develop through that paper? And how is it progressing you towards your career goal? And this is something that the, the, the program is helping you sort of figure out too in that planning process at the beginning. So take a few minutes now, um, we'll say three minutes um, to try and come up with one activity, uh, one idea of something you could do related to one of the four core categories. And if questions have come up in the Q&A that I can answer now, I'm also happy to do that while people are writing their answers in. Oh, excellent. I see someone is thinking of attending GradFlix this year. So remember, when you're putting these in, make sure to include which of the four core categories this would involve, like communication, career preparation, leadership, or personal effectiveness. But yes, I'm, I am shamelessly going to plug GradFlix. It's a real, it's a real blast. I've been involved with it in the last couple of years, um, doing like sort of the training sessions and the drop-in sessions for it. Um, it's a lot of fun, and as I said, cash prizes and things like that. Good chance to see everyone else's research as well. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And even if you're not entirely sure that the activity is is something that, that fits with a core category, just put it in anyway. You know, it, it's useful to sort of just brainstorm free flow of ideas of what kinds of things people could do. Well, here we go. So create a writing group for students in the department. Leadership, good. Write an academic blog post related to research, communication, attend a virtual career fair, and request to follow up a meeting with a potential employer. Fantastic. Yes, those, are, those are some great ones there. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, if you're, if you're interested in creating a writing group, the Writing and Communication Center has a program called uh, Waterloo Writes that helps you do exactly that. It basically helps you set up your own writing group within your department, and they actually have helped people set up uh, writing groups for different departments uh, across the university. Um, so you can definitely check out check out that Waterloo Rights and the Writing Communication Center in general if you're interested in doing something like that. Speak like a scholar, another great one. Good. Publication, leadership or communication, yeah. So getting something published is definitely something that's um, that works towards a specific career goal for sure. See a couple people uh, with the three minute thesis presentation or GradFlix, those are great ones for communication. And the reason those are good uh, exercises for communication is because it helps you think about your research in a different way. Um, so I actually ended up shifting my research focus in my dissertation um, ages ago. This was years, this is a couple years ago now. Um, after sort of looking into the three minute thesis presentation and trying to articulate my research in three minutes, and I realized wow, my topic is really convoluted and confusing. <laughs> so I can't really explain this in three minutes. And I thought, maybe that's kind of an issue. And so I actually went back and sort of looked at my fundamental topic and asked, you know, can I simplify this in some way to make it sort of a bit more, a bit more, not necessarily straightforward, but streamlined um, and make my research and my focus, and my research question a lot clearer. So those, those types of competitions and, and projects can really help you sort of think about things like that and, and can make some surprising progress in different ways. Okay, I'll give another minute for anyone who's still still writing here, but there's some great, great responses already, which is good to see. Okay, I will I will go on because I, I do see that we're um, we're coming up on the time limit here. 
So this is what your individual development plan is going to look like, right? So as you fill it out, and you can, again, there's a fillable PDF version of this in the OneDrive uh, folder that was shared with you as part of this workshop. What you're going to be going doing is going through and choosing a core category, looking at specific skills you want to develop in that category, and then what workshops and activities you're going to do in order to All right, so it seems like Graham is having some technical difficulties, so we're just waiting for him to get his connection and come back. But in the meantime, if there are any questions, please do post them in the Q&A section, and we can start answering those questions in the meantime. Apologies for the inconvenience. Julia, it looks like maybe um, Graham isn't reconnecting, so I'll quickly, um, I'll share the PowerPoint if I can in the last three minutes that we have left, um, while Ileana just takes care of any Q&A. Um, any questions coming in, please feel free to ask them if there's anything that's come up. I'm going to just take a minute right now to share my screen and finish up the PowerPoint that Graham was going to wrap up. It might just take me one second here. Actually, rather than doing that, my internet is also really weak. So I'm just going to finish by saying one more thing. Um, the final thing that Graham didn't get a chance to talk about was the capstone, which is the final step, step four in the Professional Skills Foundations process. So that capstone is meant to sort of wrap up all your activities, all your workshops, and it's a chance to meet with either myself or my colleague, Phil. You book it through Waterloo Works and you um, book a, a capstone mock interview and we kind of go through a simulation of a job interview and, and the point is really to help you reflect and practice articulating who you are, what you've learned about yourself, your skills, your interests and so on. Um, and so Graham, I'm just sharing with everyone what the capstone is without the slide. So I've, I've jumped to that slide right now. Um, and then after you're done that capstone, you write a reflection on it and submit that. And that is the final stage of your professional skills foundations. Um, so Graham, I don't know if you're able to um, jump back to that slide. If not, that's OK. I skipped forward to um, step four professional skills foundations if you're able to, but but wherever wherever it works for you as you jump back in. And you're muted. So I'll just wait a second here to. Uh, thanks so much, Kira. I, I apologize to everyone. My power went out for some strange reason and it booted me off the Internet and everything and took a while for it to flicker back on. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you just explained the capstone mock interview already. Correct, that's where I am, yeah. Fantastic. I will, uh, I will move past it. So I don't, we won't have time for the, I was gonna have a final activity where we bring it all together in a Mentimeter exercise, but I don't think we'll have time at the moment. Um, oh. Hello? 
We can still hear you. All good. OK, maybe maybe we did lose Graham one more time. Sorry, everyone. Thank you for your patience with today's technical issues. It seems unfortunate, but <laughs> both Graham and I are having those tech issues. Um, I, I think at this point uh, we have covered all the most important stages. The rest were sort of activities to help you sort of start reflecting and thinking. Um, why don't we go into Q&A right now? It is 11 o'clock, but um, are there any questions that we can answer at this point in time about your um, about the Professional Skills Foundations and about how that would look? Any questions about the program? Uh, hello again. Uh, is apparently very tenuous after the power outage. Um, so I, instead of sharing my, my video again, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to sort of go through very quickly what the next steps would be, right? So um, as, as Kira mentioned, the final capstone is sort of the, uh, the mock interview is the culmination of everything uh, within the program. Uh, and it, when it comes to the next steps um, for where you go from here, um, Basically, that involves is if you haven't already, you can register for a Professional Skills Foundations program, um, and you, and then create your complete your IDP. You should have a good idea of how to do that. You already have um, a workshop and activity and things like that brainstormed during this during this um, this workshop. And what you do is you uh, book an appointment through uh, Zedcal and have your IDP approved, reviewed, and approved. So so you'll you will receive a follow up email. Um, after this workshop with um, links to both of those things to register to um, and as well as to book an appointment through Zedcal as well as the link to the uh, the OneDrive folder in case you missed that uh, and we also will send um, a, a a link to a feedback survey through Qualtrics and we we do really value your insights and perspectives related to these types of workshops and we use them to sort of refine and develop these workshops in the future. Uh, so please, uh, if you have a chance, do fill out that, that survey. It doesn't take very long, uh, so we'll be sending that to you via email afterwards. Um, I guess the next step is just uh, questions now. So if you have any questions um, uh, about the Professional Skills Foundation, uh, we can field those now. And if you have any questions in the future, simply reach out to uh, gradventure at uwarloo.ca, and um, one of us can put that in the chat if that works for, for them. Uh, but yeah, so thank you so much for for bearing with us through those technical difficulties. I, I do sincerely apologize for that. Uh, the full we will we'll put up the full slides. We'll be providing them to the SSO to put up on on their learn site or uh, uh, or elsewhere if they have it available. Um, so you will be able to see the final few slides that we weren't able to show you. Uh, but for now, if there's any questions uh, we can answer, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, to share them. Oh, thank you very much, Juliana, for, for sharing that. Okay, so do we have any questions? Um, perhaps from the Q and A during the during the presentation, did, were there any questions that came up that uh, that could be answered now? Graham, there's a name about the Learn um, page. How, what is the name of the Learn page for the Professional Skills Foundation? Uh, so the, the name of the Learn page is just Professional Skills Foundation, um, and once you uh, register for the program, uh, you won't be able to find it uh, immediately. Uh, I don't believe. Uh, but once you register for the program, we register you for the Learn site, and then there you'll have access to um, this workshop content. It will all be on Learn, as well as other uh, materials that were in the, shared in the OneDrive. Uh, but you have to register first. So if you are interested in, in checking that out, um, 
you know, just register through the link that will be uh, sent in the email or just go to Professional Skills Foundation um, registration on our website and uh, and we'll follow up with, with uh, a link to end uh, information about the Learn site. Any other questions? Any other questions that have come in? Okay, well, um, if any, if you do have any questions about the program at any point in the, in, in the future, um, uh, please reach out to us at, at again, gradadventure at uwaterloo.ca. We're happy to answer any questions you have, whether you want help brainstorming different activities or workshops, or you have more questions about the program, or if you want your IDP approved ASAP, just feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, thank you so much for, for coming in today and for learning more about this program. We hope to, to see you as part of it. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you so much, Graham, uh, Kira, and Ileana today. Um, so with that, we come to the end of today's live session. I'd like to thank our presenters for sharing their thoughts and experiences with us today and answering some very important questions. I'd also like to thank the audience for attending the session and engaging with us today. I'd like to remind you all that there are additional resources available for you on the Grad Ready course on Learn, which will give you more information about upcoming live sessions. You can always connect with the discipline specialists within the SSO who are here to help you. Please note that a recording of this live session will also be available on Learn. I hope everyone has a wonderful day ahead of them. Thank you once again. Take care. Stay safe and goodbye.